Hello, welcome to the video. Today I'm working on a 2012 Volkswagen Tiguan. It's a four-wheel drive, not that that particularly matters for the job that we're doing, which is front discs and pads. Oh, I thought I'd bring you along. Bring you along for most of it, that is. I've already done one side, uh, but on the basis that you don't really want to watch two sides of me doing exactly the same thing, I thought I'd just record one of them. So, here we go. It's done about 85,000 miles, I think. Um, and it has been stood for a little while because of uh, that uh, that virus. I've just forgotten the name of it at the moment. Um, but anyway, it's been stood for a little while. So if you notice cobwebs and if you think the di discs look like, well, look like it hasn't been driven for a while, then you're right, it hasn't. And um, we know why that is. So I'll show you the disc that I've taken off already. I'm actually doing this job because of discs rather than pads, although obviously I'm changing both. So it's a classic story, the outer face of the disc looks okay, although a little bit rusty. Flip it over and you can see it's got a nice rusty ring around the edge there where the uh, the pads or the caliper hasn't been sliding properly and that is the result. So it's having new discs and pads. can't remember if this car comes with a uh, thing to remove these little lovely plastic wheel bolt covers but I've made my own it's just a 90 degree angle on a piece of wire with a hook on the other end for your finger I tend to try and be a good boy and use hand tools only for the locking wheel nut. Which is why I'm having to use a wedge. Because the car's already jacked up. Wouldn't have that problem if you were using an impact. But I'd also be really annoyed with myself if I damaged the locking wheel nut for using an impact. So I can feel already, and you'll see it in a minute, there's the same lip on the disc this side as there was in the one I showed you on the other side. Uh, it's rusty as I say because it hasn't been driven for a little while. I'm just going to turn the wheel now, turn the steering, so that this is pointing out a bit more, it just makes life easier. Uh, 17 millimeter on the uh, wheel bolts, by the way. So the inboard pad on these brakes has got clips, so it's clipped into the caliper piston, which means that you can't just whip the caliper off and then do the pads afterwards. You've got to take at least the inboard pad off with the caliper. So these are seven, are they seven? Yeah, seven millimeter Allen or hex.
have a hook ready. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Come on, Andrew, come on. Right. <laughs> Forgot to do this, probably because the other side doesn't have one. So there's a wear indicator on these pads on this side. I think I'll carry on actually with taking the caliper off and then I'll pop the uh, pop the wear indicator plug out afterwards. Hook that out of the way round the spring. So just in case that wasn't quite clear what I was doing there, pulled this out first because I wanted to be able to get the screwdriver into there to lever that back like that. You'll see why inside here. So when you lever that back, it lifts the tab up which enables you to pull the connector off. Take these pins out because they need a good old clean up. We can also take the outer pad out. Now you can see the, you may be able to see if we get it under light, the corrosion around here. And we'll see probably when we take the caliper bracket off, or the pad carrier off, whatever you want to call it, um, there's more corrosion on there. Just enough to stop the pads sliding smoothly uh, and so uh, causing that uneven wear on the disc that we've seen. Okay, these ones are tight, they're 21s. In fact, that, these ones are the main reason why I've turned the wheel like that because then I can get my impact in to take them off. Good old amount of corrosion and clag on there. We'll be cleaning that up shortly. I'll be cleaning that up shortly with a wire brush. Aha! Right, time for a big hammer. So in case you're wondering why I am sounding a bit um, nasal, maybe a bit of a Darth Vader sound in the background as well, it's because I've got a mask on because this makes a whole load of dust and I don't really want to breathe it in. We have two levels of encouragement here. So let's see how we do with level one.
So only level one hammer required. You can see the nice rusty ring there, which I'll clean up in a minute. Uh, corresponding nice rusty ring on the disc. And there's the whole reason we're changing it, that huge, the, the disc that is that huge lip on the inside there, uh, where the pads haven't been contacting properly. So that's looking a lot better in terms of rust but there's still a couple of areas particularly there where the rust is such that the metal really is quite rough and you, you can't imagine that the pads would be able to slide smoothly in those grooves. I'm just going to use a very fine file to clean that up a little bit. The rust can squeeze on the pads and, and, and stop them sliding. Of course the flip side to that is that if you go crazy with filing then the pads will chatter about in the pad bracket and will make a really annoying noise. There's no hard and fast rule on this I suppose uh, to be certain about fixing it by a new one of these but you I can imagine. I, I, I'm wincing at the price and I don't even know the price so uh, I always prefer to give some uh, very gentle and considered cleaning up instead. One shiny new disc is a Obviously Techstar, as you'll be able to tell from the bag. Talk specification for this is low, um, so I just do it without a torque wrench, uh, very, very carefully, as you just saw.
you may need to correct your brake fluid level when you're doing this This, sorry, let's say what it actually is, shall we? Being pushing the piston back in. Right, now's the time to clean your slider pins. Those ones may not look particularly clean, but they are completely smooth and free from grease. So I've cleaned them with brake cleaner and a small wire brush and plenty of rags. I put a tiny bit of anti-seize on the threads and then a, an even tinier bit of silicone grease just on the bits that are actually sliding in the caliper housing. Okay, so now we're ready, I think we're ready, yeah, to start putting things back together. Clean the cobweb off your connector if you've got one. Cobweb, that is not a connector. Right. encourage that pad into its mounting point. Now I do it in this order but it does make it a bit cack handed because then you've got to apply your anti-seize paste for the brakes while you're holding the caliper in one hand and it is quite heavy. I'm using Febby Bilstein uh, Bremsch Belag paste, oh brake pad paste, there we go. Apologies for my German pronunciation. At that point we can now hang this back up. I've done that because the angle I've got this wheel at, both to make it easier to video and also to actually do the job, means that this pad, when you put it in place, it wants to fall out. So if you can put the pad in like that, rather than sliding it in, 
and you won't smear your lubricant everywhere and it will be under the ears of the pad exactly where you want it to be. I am now going to use my knee to hold that one. Now it's time to apply a torque wrench to these, 200 newton meters. And then 30 newton meters for these slider pins. Just going to press on the brake now to seat everything back into position. Just say for reference, I suppose, that if these pads didn't have these sort of squidgy anti-squeal backing plates on already, then I'd put some lubricant between the caliper and the pad. But because they have, I felt that it wasn't necessary, so I've just used the lubricant on the sliding areas of the, of the pads, and you can see a little bit there. So the last thing to do is to put this spring back on.
Now the way I've come up with of doing this is the very high tech way of using a shoelace. with a reef knot like that And then just a little tap to make sure that both sides of the spring are completely seated in the holes. There we go. So on with the wheel. A little bit cleaner than it was when I took it off, I hope you can tell. Just give it a quick wash. I'll also explain why it's still wet, obviously. Okay, that's one side done then, and obviously the other side is exactly the same, apart from the fact that it doesn't have the plug-in wear indicator. The last thing I've got to do now is just check and adjust the brake fluid level again, because it may well have gone over maximum. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. If you like this type of thing, please subscribe. That's me done for now, so thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.